Hello, imaginary cannon fodder. I am back with yet another 3D printed muzzle loading nerf blaster. Something a little different today. It's a flintlock hand mortar that shoots both the old school nerf rockets and the new Mega XL darts. Before I dive into the details, a quick reminder that if you want to print your own one of these, the files for these are in the video description. And if you don't have your own printer, but still want one, I've linked some production partners who can probably help you out also in the video description. So with that out of the way, what the heck is a hand mortar? I don't like adding too much historical flavor to all the toy blasters I'm designing, but this one's a little more obscure than normal, so let's go there. It's pretty much an early grenade launcher. You'd load it like a typical muzzle loader with some gunpowder down the barrel that was rammed. Then you'd take a cartoonishly large bomb, light its fuse, chuck it in, and throw that at whatever fort or person you disliked that took your fancy. It could also be used for fireworks, harpoons, or anything you wanted to get really far over there. These started appearing in Europe around the 1600s, originally mostly as wheel locks, which, uh, you may remember that wheel lock design I had from a few months back. This barrel fits that too if you want the really old school look. They were, apparently, never super popular in combat. The grenades were never very reliable. Tactics got better, muskets got more accurate. In time, I believe by the late 1700s, this wasn't really a thing on the battlefield. It stayed around for harpoons and fireworks stuff. Okay, enough forgotten weapons. Let's talk about how this one works can't go lobbing grenades and fireworks at each other at children's birthday parties outside of America. So as mentioned, this guy shoots these two, Mega XL and Nerf rockets. The way it does that is take our little ramrod and we prime it over here. Now we have a K26 spring inside a plunger tube back here. Then take your rocket or Mega XL and mount it on this here spigot. And that one's really tight because there are actually two different spigot sizes, which I've included in the design. Because as it turns out, Nerf Mega has a much bigger inner diameter than the sort of old school rockets. So that one is like a little better. It's still supposed to be tight. Now, both of these will fit on the Mega XL spigot. So in fact, yeah, so we'll show you the rocket fitting. That pop means it's tight. And the Mega. Prime it. Ow. Leads to the question, how well do they shoot? Let's go to range and start with the Mega XL. These are pretty awesome. They make a big whistling noise and get about 15 meters or more and hit roughly where you aim them. Meanwhile, the Nerf rockets are a different story. They are huge with fins, which means the slightest wind sends them far away into Never Never Land. It's not as big a problem when you're indoors, but outdoors past five meters, precision is out of the question. Best is when the wind is behind you and takes them much further than they are supposed to go. I am not getting those back. So how does it come together? First, when you take off the flint block plate down here, as MOMA designs, we have our usual sort of working flintlock assembly. Put that aside for now. That lets us see the inside. I'm just gonna so there you can see the catch and action. Now as with all my blasters you never want to dry fire one of these because all the force of that air is going to hit the blaster itself. So just put your finger over that spigot, and there we go. Cool. So there's these two screws holding together the front of the assembly. Take off the screw to the tank.
see the whole assembly comes off. Uh, ignore this hole. I got a little too excited trying to remove some supports there earlier. So as you may have guessed, this is super similar to the musket I posted previously. And in fact, we can take off the front. You may notice it assembles the exact same way, at least in terms of the plunger tube. Oh, that's right, we'll need this gun. As mentioned, follow the assembly guide for the musket I posted previously. It's mostly the same process once you've got this section assembled. The lock is the same. That's all the changes are up here in the barrel. So, so I've kind of neatened everything out. So once you got your sort of tube end spigot thing in there, I'm gonna grab sort of outer shell, throw that on, on the outside. Take your two 20 millimeter screws. Align those. That's your uncle. Might be Bob. Take your K26 or whatever spring you want. Check that in there. Hard to see on camera, but make sure the spring goes round, those holes should line up. I'll have to ignore, I built this out of some older test parts I had from the musket and they are mistreated. Cool, barrel assembly. Now make sure you get your uh, ramrod guide, a little bit of a different design, but roughly the same idea. Off. Everything should just slide in, and your Wii securing front cap. your front barrel assembly. Yet another reminder, you can use this with the wheel lock. It does fit. Make sure the ramrod gets in nice. Seems to. First screw you want to get in is this guy. We're good. Okay, I think that's everything. Pretty straightforward build. As I said before, if you want to print one of these for yourself, the files, all the hardware lists of everything you'll need, it's all stuff you can get from McMaster Car, but I provide detailed links. Check the video description. This will fit on a Prusa Mini even because the barrels are so short. And you can print the stock on a pretty small printer because it's available in a split version as well. If you don't have a printer, check the video description for print partners. Please don't ask me in the comments to make you one. As always, subscribe, buy my crap, bayonet update coming soon. We have a Discord, tip your waitresses.